As a successor to the diameter protocol, session initiation protocol is the next and the final standard which has so far been incorporated by the NGN. In this module, we are going to look at the protocol, its inherent operation features, how it implements its functionality through messages, and how it can have some kind of abstraction implemented through addressing. So session initiation protocol is actually something that works uh, between the application layer and the transport layer. Um, if you recall, we had two layers in the ISO OSI reference model. Uh, we had the uh, presentation layer and the session layer in the ISO OSI model. But uh, TCP IP actually uh, simply uh, reduced uh, the seven layers into five layers. So uh, SIP actually is something that is uh, at the application layer, uh, but it facilitates data, uh, multimedia traffic uh, to be transmitted in real time from the client to the server. Therefore, uh, we can say that uh, SIP is something that is an effort to go back to the seven layers uh, when it started from uh, ISO OSI, then back to five layers of TCP IP, then once again, SIP is there. So it is essentially a protocol which is required for signaling because uh, the client and server or two clients cannot uh, perform signaling with the traditional TCP IP protocol suite. Uh, it has been adopted by ITF as a replacement for, for signaling standard number seven, uh, both for the ISTN users and for the uh, telephony users. Uh, ISTN was a ve uh, very good uh, standard as compared to telephony because it offered some additional services like uh, like uh, uh, voice data and uh, uh, similar other control services uh, but essentially a uh, signaling standard uh, 7 was adopted for telephony uh, in um, the landline phones and in the uh, mobile telephony uh, now that uh, sip replaces it it has to incorporate the same level of reliability and completeness, which was the hallmark of um, SS7. So um, SIP essentially manages the multimedia connections. It means that it helps the multimedia uh, connections to be established, to be maintained, and to be terminated between um, um, two parties as a unicast or multicast or even broadcasting. Uh, so uh, it is now incorporated in IP multimedia subsystem as part of the overall NGN architecture. Uh, so it is implemented in the TCP IP stack through the support of TCP, uh, uh, the streaming control trans transport protocol or the UDP. Um, since SIP has to be very flexible, so it supports uh, uh, mapping of names from one format to the other as well as for redirection once uh, a certain called party has changed its location so its uh, updated location has to be shared with the calling party so this kind of redirection is a requirement which sip has to support um, so uh, the beauty about sip is that not only it can use the underlying protocols at the uh, transport layer uh, it can also be integrated uh, as a component with uh, the application layer protocols themselves although SIP is an application layer protocol in its own cell. Uh, for instance, it can be connected uh, uh, as a component along with the uh, HTTP, uh, the real-time streaming protocol, and the uh, session description protocol. Um, uh, SIP actually uses a uh, real-time protocol for the transmission of uh, traffic between the uh, calling and called parties, multi-conference situation, etc. So we see that uh, this RTP can be used between two parties, uh, as in voice over IP. Then it can be implemented for a multi-party conference scenario. Uh, then it can also be used for multicasting in uh, IPTV, uh, where a particular video uh, podcast is shared between multiple uh, users who have subscribed to that particular service. SIP is based on uh, the client server architecture, which is quite similar to how HTTP works. Uh, here again, the request is generated by, by a client, which is a, which is a logical 
entity on the sender side then it is sent to the receiving entity uh, which is more like a server so we have a client server interaction it is different from um, uh, http in the sense that we have uh, a client that is a client forever and a server that's a server forever here it is actually a little different any request being initiated is done through a client so in a in a typical voice over ip uh, two party situation the one who initiates as a calling party is a client and the the one who receives is more like a, a server so it means that the client and server context here is going to be a little tricky and different um so the server actually uh, takes the requests uh, and uh, processes them and initiates a response uh, so uh, any single entity any user equipment or a particular user for that matter can be a client as well as a server um, all the functionality of sip is implemented through the messaging uh, this messaging is so intelligently designed uh, to keep it very flexible uh, so first of all the most important thing in the sip messaging is the uh, caller id uh, the uh, the call id the call id is essentially the first uh, identifier that is assigned by the by the calling party or the creator of this particular request and it remains uh, intact and unchanged uh, all along the uh, call session uh, and it is used as a reference by all the participants uh, so it means that every um, SIP message is going to contain this uh, call ID as a reference to a particular uh, uh, calling party called party pair. So there are uh, typically six messages, although there are variants to these messages as well. But primarily, uh, there is an invite message that is used by the caller to initiate a session. Uh, then there's an acknowledgement. It is an acknowledgement that the caller actually. Uh, has received the answer uh, to a particular request. Uh, then there is buy, which terminates a connection. Uh, uh, cancel is actually, if a, if a session is already on, it has to be uh, disrupted before actually call transfer can take, uh, call establishment can, can take place. It is uh, cancel. Now, there's a very fine difference between buy and cancel. Cancel is more abrupt, whereas buy is more... Uh, a graceful way of closing a particular session uh, then there is a message known as register here uh, the user uh, agent or the user equipment uh, registers its current uh, location that is identified through its ip address or the uh, uniform resource identifier which is more like a url like structure uh, to which the user actually can associate to so it means when a user uh, registers itself through an ip address or a uri it means any response would be sent or uh, associated to this particular um, address. Then there is an option message as well, uh, where the uh, caller actually uh, under, tries to understand the uh, features or the uh, capabilities that it is entitled to, and the calling party has a certain feature. So it means this options actually. Uh, 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 is something which is used by the uh, parties calling or called to understand what are their capabilities and how those capabilities can be um, initiated. Um, as we said in the beginning, that SIP has to be flexible. Uh, so the flexibility is achieved through the uh, um, uh, uh, identification, which is based on more generalized form of representation as in web like email address or like a domain name uh, so you see that we have a, a, a uri scheme which is very generalized form like http www dot something dot com or dot whatever so each element in sip is actually identified uh, as a logical entity uh, so it means that uh, a physical device like a user equipment can have a logical id so it would be referred to on the basis of that logical ID. So what we can conclude from here is that uh, SIP architecture or this whole SIP framework that works along with so many other protocols that we've already mentioned, uh, it is more like an overlay. Overlay means it's a logical um, 
mapping on a physical network. Now let's look at the typical forms, although these are not the only forms of URIs. Let's look at these examples. Again, this uh, illustration is from uh, the handbook on next generation networks by Tony Janevsky. So we see here, we have uh, different forms of uh, SIP identifiers, like we have uh, user123. Uh, uh, in the first example, it has its own uh, authentication password inline at the rate the domain with the port number as tetra6 then the other one is uh, we have the sip user123 at a particular domain the third one is on the basis of ip address instead of a domain name the fourth one is a web address or a typical url or uri representation of a certain server and the last one is again the identifier which does not have any user, but it has its own mailbox, like one, two, three, two, up to nine at example.com is nothing but mailbox where a particular user account is created. So it means that these URIs are some examples of how SIP can manage addressing and naming.